Ai. À... I I'm reviewing Spy Kids, the first one from 2001, and oh my god. Um, I know I said I like this movie, but um, in my past videos, over one of the last time reviews, but um, going back to my original thoughts on this movie, I think I uh, hate it. Yeah. So, the movie uh, opens up with their parents telling them a bedtime story to our Carmel and Junie. Uh, the, and uh, it's really their story of when they were spies before they retired, the bedtime story is. And, uh, but the other kids don't know that the parent parents are actually used to be spies and retired. They don't find out until they decide to Well This is what hates makes me hate the movie um everything's all dandy and stuff until the setup to the story comes into place of the dilemma of this main story. Well, the setup is that, uh, mom and dad go back into retirement and leave their son and daughter home alone with a stranger that pretending to be their uncle. Why? Well, because he, like, the, uh, he, like, in, the father hasn't spoken to their uncle in years <laughs> because they got into an argument and, and lost connection with each other. It's one of those things. So, uh, and you, now you're thinking, well, why not this? I know what you're now. I know what you're thinking. Why not this? Why a complete stranger? Well, because that's what they thought was the best babysitter. A stranger that Carmel and Judy don't know. Um, so it's not like the grandparents are dead; they're alive, but they want to hop on the mission on the boat mission with uh, Judy and Carmel's parents. So uh, they're assholes too, and irresponsible fucking morons. Is every parent in the world a fucking moron? What kind of parent leaves their kids home alone with a stranger? And then has them pose as their uncle and I was even told, wait, wait, why did he have to like lie about the uh, uncle, them being the uncle? Why not just tell him, okay, we're leaving you a home with a good friend of mine that you never met before. That seems like a more justification reason and better reason. That's what well, you see. The parents in Spy Kid universe are so up their own asses, you know? Especially the adults that are spies. But that's the part of the Spy Kid's charm. In the f fuck. So. The mission goes south when, uh, and it was, oh, get this, it was the mother's idea. Now, you would think the mother would, the mother would be more responsible for this, but no, she just wants to have this spice in this in their relationship, because they want to go on a mission together, and because their relationship has become dull, and because they have kids now. The father tr tr tries to convince them, talk them sense to them, but... He cannot resist the mother's basically booty call. And having fun with one leaving the kids all alone with a stranger that they never even met before. Oh my god. So...
they get caught by this villain that uh, runs a television kids show for Saturday mornings. That Judy watches with Carm, her, her, her sister. But he's more fan than his sister because he's younger, I guess. It's, it's like... So he wants to be a villain, take over the world, I guess, or something. But uh, he's more obsessed with this show because he feels like it's missing something. So he's a villain, but he's more obsessed with the show. Why not just retire the whole villain thing? I don't fucking know, because we need a fucking villain to this piece of shit of a movie. Because every bad guy needs to be in a kid's film, great. Even when there's the main, there's revealed that the minion is the henchman called Minion is actually the is more of a delvish mastermind than the actual main villain, so he portrays him. This when uh, in prison in prison with uh, Jews and Carmen's parents. Because he kind of wants to put, a, he just kind of wants to stop with the whole villain things, and uh, because he's just not into it. So he is in prison in a worse prison. Basically, it's a prison of his own mind. It's a holographic prison. And Judy and Carm uh, go to the safe house. That's where their real uncle is. Because their fake uncle reveals he's not their, that he's a fake uncle, he's a stranger. So he tells them to trust him, and they trust him and listen to him for some reason. And then these fingers, henchmen, that made out fingers, kidnap him. And then they mutate him into a saying something. Some they mutate him into a basically a, a children's cartoon claymation thing, you know. Uh, called doodle or something. Is this a uh, I don't know what it's called, something, uh, so, uh, so, uh, then, uh, meanwhile, um, when that's happening, like, the guy that gets the bad guy that's before trained by the minion, guy called Mr., but takes on a new name from minion to Mr. Minion, um, he has been trying to, uh, Play with to uh, use putty to make a sculpture of the Combs, Julian Combs' father's face, and uh, now that comes back later in the film. So that's foreshadowing the outcome of how they're going to reverse the effects of Julian Combs' father being mutated and turned into a drawing that. Judy Drew. I'm not making this up, I swear to God. Oh, I wish I was. So, they find this out. And, um... When Shu gets in pri out of prison with the uh, gag, I now turn good. Because you made him realize he was good all along, blah, 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 a good person. And the one that got in prison was the holographs of prison. So they break free. And they turn their father back into normal. And, um. Oh, I mentioned the part where they actually basically. Uh, steal all the uncle stuff that used to, the uh, spy stuff, including the ride. 
the uncle, real uncle, is played by Dan Trejo, and, uh, well, I'll be honest, before anyone basically gave a shit about who he was due to his famous role in the Machete movies. He picked a lot of movies like this before he played Machete. You know, God. The uncle versus half right? They take off, try to stop them, blah, blah, blah. And then he just smiles and is like, okay, with it. And then he comes to uh, back the family up when all oh, hope seems, uh, you know, uh, seems against them. Uh, and reunites with his brother, blah, 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 in the third act. After Carmen Judy's far, I guess, for, for effects get reversed from being mutated and stuff. Then the, uh, then the, then he comes to design for M Mr. Minion. And he... Is he into the remote? Uh, to mutate himself, and he is told not to let go if he doesn't want to get mutated, basically. So, uh, he just says, Those fools. And let's go with the remote, and guess mutate, I guess. It's, it's fucking stupid, I think. And, uh, he says like that, and, uh, it's so confusing, this is. Oh, the finger armies, they turn on each, against, it. the, develop their own tension along with the clones of children throughout the world, and going to Carmen Drew after Carmen Drew to feed the clones of themselves. By outsmiting them. After Drew decides to do a dumb thing by punching a fucking brick wall. And hit her with his fist. Which was fucking stupid and funny. <laughs> he did that movie was tough. <laughs> and this is the point so that was fucking stupid. Of you. You're not that strong. <laughs> and then he realized, holy shit, you're right, I'm not that strong. That hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the stupid. Oh, the stewards are funny. <laughs> okay, so, uh... After being mixed scared, he mutates. He got uh, things up with his thing, the finger guys, armies, and the uh, clone armies of clones. And they, besides, they hand the fingers of armies of fingers. That are robots. <laughs> uh. So, uh, you know, I swear to God, I honestly forgot how this climax ends, but it ends with feeling all teaming up and uh, against this army. They win, I forget where the how the climax goes, but I remember they come on top. Then, they say to the CEO that asking that the kids are becoming spies, and they tell them, No, go fuck yourself. Because families was fighting for not being a spy, and uh, next movie, they're fucking spies. Like the family, the kids are. It's just. Holy God. I'm confused. What? Did I miss something? When did they change their minds? So. I say. Fuck this movie. I give the Artemis. I, I, 
or three out of ten. It's 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 just bad. It's it's somewhere in the ten out of ten category, was lower than ten out of ten. Is a fucking two out of ten. I think or a three out of ten. Let me just take a moment to process this to figure out how bad this is. Let me all sink into my head. Yep. And that's Spy Kids. The movie's a fucking 3 out of 10. Final decision. I made my decision 3 out of 10. It's, it's a 3 out of 10 because I at least remember parts of it. Even though I forgot a good chunk of it. It's, it's at least kind of funny how bad it is because like, you feel like you're going insane as the film goes on. To a point you can't stop but some reason laugh because you feel like your sanity losing grip of your sanity was whatever you have. Depending on the the individual, that's what it feels like to me. So that's why I guess a three out of ten. Fuck this movie. Spy Kids. And and then, then after Spy Kids, there were three sequels to this stupid movie. Yep. Tune in for me to review those three sequels that came after the first one. Yeah, there's four total. Yeah. The first one isn't as well known as the other ones. It's... I don't think it is. I don't have enough to talk about the fourth one, but, uh... Yeah. There's a fourth one. Have fucking mercy on my soul.